This is News 3 This Morning. Good morning, I'm Joe Champ. Thanks for joining. January 15th, 1991, News 3 Now This Morning officially goes on the air for the first time. It's the first regularly scheduled morning newscast in Madison. And Joe Champ and Gary Canalti were members of the first anchor team. So I guess I want to start with you guys. Maybe first you, Joe. What were you thinking um, as you started this new news program? What were you thinking? Yeah. <laughs> Stop right there. What were you thinking? It was one thing to, you have to understand, it wasn't sort of slapped together. It was something that they had been talking to me from the summer, maybe as far back as the summer, about you know this idea for this morning news show. The networks, you know, they, they had all the content that was being provided in the morning and then they got all the advertising. And so I think the station thought, you know, we, we can do that. We, we, can, we can have a presence and we can bring in some advertising dollars and we can inform, you know, the community. And so we came up with this idea to, to, to have this, this morning show. Before this, we'd only had morning cut-ins. And so we, we pulled this team together. You know, Tom Beer was the head of the thing. Uh, Steve Kane was involved. Uh, Neil Heinen was there. Uh, Nan Blom Roach, uh, people like uh, Peter Klepp and John Steele, just to come together and, and say, well, what is it that we want to present you know, to, to the public, to, to, to people? And we really wanted it to be something where um, people could just come in and sort of start their day. You know, so uh, they could get some news, you know, get some weather, uh, maybe laugh a little bit, hear from an interesting person in the community on an interview. And that was it, you know, then, then goodbye, have a, good, have a good day. And we also wanted it to be a situation where uh, that we, we wanted to have people involved that the public can trust, you know, this feeling of trust. And so it's really an honor for me to be in, in, in amongst this group because all of you sort of met that standard, you know, that, that you'd be someone I'd want to hear fun things from, but also tough things. So that was kind of the idea. Well, and in true TV fashion, you did all that planning and preparation. And then was it the second day that the Gulf War <laughs> began and they took, the networks took programming 100%, so you were essentially off the air again. What was that like? You know, it was, it was really, you got to remember, that's when CNN was kind of coming into its own. You know, this is back in the early 90s. Uh, cable TV had really just started to, to really become popular just before that. So between CNN and the networks going 24-7, when we came back the next day, we had an audience there. I mean, people were watching around the clock because, you know, they were, you know, six, seven hours ahead what was going on there. So, you know, in the middle of the night, early in the morning, it's already noon, you know, where all the fighting is going on. So people were watching early in the morning. So we had this audience to start out with. So when we started out, it was just a, you know, a half hour newscast and it was pretty much a straight half hour newscast. But pretty quickly after that, we expanded to an hour and then an hour and a half. And then, you know, we added more features and, you know, the, the morning show really evolved quite a bit that, that first year or two that, uh, that we started. Yeah, and I, it really was a buzzkill though, right? We were really excited, we were, we were fired up to do this and all of a sudden, hey guys, you gotta stand down. <laughs> like Gary said, as soon as we were able to get back on the air with our content, we just had this huge audience and there was no competition. So if anyone wanted sort of that local uh, spin on the news, they had to turn to us. And so that really helped us with the ratings and we kind of rode that throughout the entire time I was there. I'm sure it's continuing on. But, uh, but it was, it was kind of hard to take. I do think that I, I was glad they didn't cancel Monday's show. You know, we, we were wondering what was going to happen. We were looking over our shoulders. Because then it, it was almost like in sports when you take that, that first hit. And uh, we had the hit. We survived it. And we were ready to get back on the air later in the week. So, and you mentioned, Gary mentioned that the morning show kind of expanded pretty quickly into this two, two and a half hour show. Um, what was like, what did you love most about the show? That's a long show to do, a long time to be on the air, but I guess, Cheryl, what did you like the most? I think I liked the the regular features. Like I was just mulling it over in my head, the fact that, wow, it's been 30 years. Um, and people like, like Donna Weihoffen started on the morning show. Um, and we would have our regular Friday segment where we would have the Madison visitor, Bill Geist was the guy at that point who would come and talk about all the events that were going on that weekend. And they all just started to become part of that morning show family. Um, so that's part of what I remember about, about the show. I, I would also add, so I am the one who came in then when the show went to an hour, um, cause that started to, you needed more writing, you needed more talking, <laughs> you needed more. Um, and, and I would emphasize too, that 
that this really was the beginning of the 24 hour news cycle um, mm -hmm. that we have really seen come full circle in this latest news cycle. So we were there right at the beginning of it, which was yeah. which was exciting. We had a lot more, um, I, I don't wanna say leverage, a lot more leeway um, as to what we could do in the morning. <laughs> Everything from like, we were pretty sure that not all the managers were watching the morning <laughs> show. <laughs> so uh, that let us have a little more fun perhaps than the, uh, the news of record, the 6 p.m. news, which made it a lot more fun, I think. <laughs> I agree. Rob, what did you like the most about the morning show? I think kind of going on what um, Cheryl said, we, we really experimented with a lot of different things. And I think we, we kept it, we, we did all the new stuff, but we had a heck of a lot of fun. Yeah. And I think our, I, I think our philosophy was that we didn't want to hit people over the head right away while you slept. The world has ended. You know, so I mean, we wanted to ease people into their day. We did all the serious stuff, but we also had a lot of fun and kept it kept it loose. And I think the, we were were the strength of this show has always been has been with the producers and the directors. And I can think of one director, So Gallmeyer who really knew Still doing how, the morning show yeah she really knew how to let this thing breathe because if we are starting a bit you know with Cheryl or Susan or with Charlotte and she knew that this was going to go somewhere and it's kind of a nice kind of a funny ending she let it go and we'd worry about the commercial breaks later but we just um and this, this show really fit my personality because I was never going to be a 6 p.m. know the news, Eric Franke kind of anchor. <laughs> and, um, and that's, I think, why I stayed so long in doing it. Um, but also had Susan's sense of humor, Cheryl's, Charlotte's putting up with me really added a lot. They were kind of the the news angle and then when you need a light moment and then you know i could do something but we had well, you might, we tease that we are we're your tv wives right yeah. we give, give you the oh rob and three. <laughs> three of them right here <laughs> i mean what and, and i always tried to draw out the sense of humor that the three wives have especially <laughs> I mean, Susan would leave me laughing so hard to be crying. I mentioned to Hattie several times while we worked together that you had to write a book about things your kids had said to you <clears throat> that were just hilarious. And Matthew, if Matthew knew some of the stories that you <laughs> told Susan, he would probably leave the country. Matthew wow. used to call Rob my workman. He was like, going to see his workman. That's right. He was about four before he figured out his yeah. name was Rob. <laughs> well, no one. Um, what? What? I guess what's the thing that you miss? Um, you've all moved on except for me from the morning show. Um, yeah, what are you doing, Patty? I don't know. <laughs> well, we'll get to that in a minute. But what? What is the thing that you guys miss the most about being part of the morning team? Well, I, I will say that there is something that happens to people when they work together in the middle of the night. I mean, you become family in a way mm -hmm. that no other team does. And the building is quiet and no one else is there. We had so much fun, you know, with the, uh, the uh, PA system through the building. We'd make announcements to each other throughout the morning. And you really, you really become tight. Um, and I think we... We had so much fun. I mean, it was a, a kinder, gentler time, which now we don't take for granted anymore. Mm -hmm. um, we, we, you know, Rob, for all of his accomplishments, will always be associated with Elvis for the rest of his mm -hmm. life. That's why I remember Rob, your birthday. Well, yeah. Rob, uh, Elvis's birthday is January 8th. That's my birthday. And we used to right. always tease Rob. That's the only way he would ever remember it. And we had a lot of Elvis impersonators on the show. We did it for my birthday, Rob. We did it for your birthday. 
Um, and we really, we just, we laughed so much. And those are the moments that sort of put a tattoo on your heart. But then there were days, um, the most that we'll never forget. Rob and I anchored together the morning of 9-11. Mm -hmm. And that was the most difficult, unbelievable, challenging, challenging day of our entire career before or since. So um, when I think about the past 30 years and the time on the morning show, some of the most pivotal events of my life happened on this show. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just, you know, these are moments that put a tattoo on your heart that are unique and different from the experience that I have today on the other side of the clock. Yeah, I was going to say, Charlotte, you made the jump tonight as well from the Dawn Patrol. Mm -hmm. But we did a lot of really fun segments on the morning show. Do you have a favorite or a favorite moment? Oh, gosh, Hattie, there are so many. There's actually <laughs> how many times like food? Food is always a big deal yeah. for yes. the morning team in general, right? So we're, we're always, always hungry. Sure that we would book a guest that has to deal with food. So at least we could eat. Because that's what TV people do, right? We get the TV stuff. Oh, and here I'm going to have a visitor from Geo. Here, so this is the reason oh, why I joined the yeah. morning show, right? Because he was a baby at the time, and I needed, you know, help. So, but this is why this is why I joined the morning show for ten years. But um, no food, food was all like, how do you like how many? We could guarantee we didn't have to go to the state fair because the cream puffs always came to us. <laughs> Yes. You know, yes. there were, like and there was a finite way to, have to eat a cream puff as well. So you don't get it all messy on your work clothes because you have the next segment you got to show up on, right? So there was, I mean, I never held Rob an earthworm, remember? They dug it out and I actually held it for the first time on the air, but I didn't scream. Um, that little alligator, the reptile guy that came in and just randomly left the, rep, the uh, little alligator or whatever on our desks, <laughs> you know, it's like you experience things on the morning show that you cannot in any other show, but really in any other job, it seems like you get to, well, to touch on everything. You get to be a chef, you get to be a zookeeper, you get to be a teacher, you get to be a construction worker, a cake maker. I mean, the, the variety was just so much fun. <laughs> Do you remember, Charlotte, the time that I just slowed down the car a little bit and picked you up in the middle of a huge snowstorm? Because I think all morning anchors can agree, like we have to show up at work before the plows are even out. So how many times oh did gosh. you literally put the foot on the gas and not stop until you got to the station? All the time. Well, remember that one yeah. time, I can't remember what year it was that I had to snowshoe into work. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I, I live, you know, relatively close to the station. And my car wouldn't go. So I was like, all right, here we go with the snowshoes. And this was, you know, right when GoPros were, were getting, you know, into society and I didn't have a GoPro. So I just, I literally had a, a headlamp on to see my way through the blizzard. And then I had my phone recording things just in case I would die on the route. And it took me 55 minutes to get to work, which would normally be two minutes. So, and then after that, you're like, Charlotte, I'll come pick you up. And she literally just, I'm just slowing down just enough. And I literally hopped in there. Like she threw the door open and I jumped in there and we just kept going. Yeah. You can't stop because you might not get started. Exactly. For anyone that doesn't know, the station's on top of a big hill. So we always had to make it up the hill to get to work. Um, yeah. Joe, I understand that you have some great footage from those early days. Yes. Um, what was it like working with Gary? It was <laughs> that's a loaded question. <laughs> Gary is a funny, funny guy, and he doesn't come across that way at first until you get to know him for a while. And I can tell you, it, it, there's no one you're talking about being broken up, uh, Rob. I, there's no one who could break me up more than Gary could, and it, it just came from completely unexpected places. Like one time, I remember. We were talking about C.W. McCall's convoy. <laughs> convoy. And I don't, know how, I don't know how we talked about this. And so Gary comes over, you know, and we're kind of small talking back and forth. And he says, you know, I was the something like the charter member of the C.W. McCall fan club. <laughs> Before so, Convoy oh, came out. Say that again? <laughs> Before Convoy came out. But nobody knew him. <laughs> <laughs> and then he, he says the name of what he says. Yeah, Convoy. He says another name. He says, Roses for Mama. Mm -hmm. and I don't know why, but that just broke me up. And I laughed through like three segments. 
they had to, they had to keep, you keep going back to commercial because you just got me laughing so hard. But I don't know, Gary, you just you, you really tickled me sometimes. I'll tell you. But we, we, you know, we, we tried to make it fun. I remember um, started getting my flu shots on the air during the morning show. <laughs> and the one year we were both going to get our flu shots and, and you weren't there. Rob was filling in for you. Oh. And my sister-in-law who worked as a vet tech got me one of those big hypodermic needles that they use for giving shots to cattle. We put some blue food coloring in there and, and basically I uh, said, this is, this is your shot. Rob. <laughs> Oh, no, so, you, but you uh, could do that kind of stuff on the morning show. The other thing I remember is word of the day. Remember that? Yes. The, oh, cool. that was a big one for a while. You know, and we had a we had a teacher at uh, McFarland, Gene. I can't remember his last name. Gene Olson. That would, Gene Olson. Yes, and he would wow. he would call and sometimes complain if we used the yeah. word wrong. But we became very good friends. So yeah, so he he came up with this idea that, or maybe we did. We said, give us a word every day, and we'll end with it. And he was pretty happy about that. And hey, one other thing I know, I don't want to capitalize all the time here, but I can respond to everything everyone is saying. But one thing that happened, which I'm curious about, Rob would know about this and Cheryl would know about this and Jerry, of course, is that for some reason, there'd be these sort of theme kind of snacks that would show up and be around for a long time. <laughs> we went through what I call the saltine cracker era. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, one day, saltine crackers showed up. And so we, we don't know, Rob, you and Cheryl, you had some, that we, you, know, you just start munching on saltines while you were working on the show for a couple of hours. And we, you know, eat those, eat those. And when they weren't there, we were kind of upset. Like, hey, where are the saltines? <laughs> we started taking turns, bringing in these boxes of saltine crackers. And we, we built up kind of a store, storage of these things. But then one day, Triscuits showed up. Not Triscuits. <laughs> yeah, Triscuits um, showed up. The animal crackers. I remember the animal oh, cracker cookies. Oh, like yes. Like five-pound bag that would be up at the news <laughs> desk. <laughs> the problem with Triscuits, and that is that they lodge in your vocal cords sometimes, like the little oh. pieces of it. And I found that out when I was on the air. I'm making all of a sudden, my, my, my phone just pulls this up and I go, we have to go to a commercial. Like that. And then they go to a commercial. And so we never ate Triscuits again. That was, it was a no no. So funny thing. Are there any other behind the scenes little things that you can share from the show um, that, any, that we haven't touched on yet? I think it's legal. Read, I mean, <laughs> we, we used to read the um, Madison School District lunch menu. <laughs> not for not for very long, but but one day it was, and I, I think I was anchoring with with Susan, and if I'm I'm wrong, correct me. And I was in my best anchorman voice reading the children in the Madison School District will be having hot dogs, pizza, <laughs> and spaghettios. And I think it was Susan who turned to me and said, "It's spaghettios, you." <laughs> <laughs> I had never had spaghettios, and I, but I try to do this in my best anchorman voice. The spaghettios for lunch. I forgot the spaghettios. Oh, that was <laughs> fabulous. Well, Dude, Rob you really also that one time you mispronounced that kid's name for "Look Who's three. Caleb, Caleb. I called Kaleeb. him Caleb, <laughs> and you said uh, it's Caleb. <laughs> <laughs> I remember taking promo pictures with Rob and Cheryl, and Rob was so tall and I was so short, I'd have to stand on a Madison and a New Glarus phone book to get to be at the right height. So we, we knew which phone books to grab when it was time to take pictures. Not Middleton, New Glarus. <laughs> yeah, you know, just the right height. Yeah, I have a lot of good memories of taping promos, and it always would just be so crazy. We could get through two and a half hours nonstop, really no mistakes, no need to start over, but it would come time to tape a simple 15 second promo. (laughs) And we would have like eight takes to try and get that promo right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had five minutes between them while we started laughing. We had so much fun on the patio too. Halloween on the patio started on the morning show. Uh, we had unicyclists back there and we used to grill out every Friday and make it a big party every single, every single week. It was so much fun. Mm. We did all those wacky promos and I heard that the, the night anchors, the 6 p.m. anchors would look forward to see what we were going to do in these promos. <laughs> they were just off the wall funny. Um, we had fun with them. I don't know if management was really happy with them, but, you know. The craziest thing that happened to me, I, I think almost in my entire career, was 
um, I was late getting to the set. And I know you all are always late getting into the set. I mean, literally like, Joe, we're at 45 seconds, 30 seconds, and you're just running. I've got my script pack and I'm running. I'm getting my jacket on. And I go through, back then you'd go through this back door to go through this, the shop to, to, to get into where we needed to be in the studio. And John Gaska had been working on uh, an Easter Seal telethon piece of the set. And he had it kind of down on the ground and there, it was made of plywood and painted. It only had to look good for you know TV. It didn't have to be perfect. So it's kind of rough. And I came out that door and I hit that thing and I just jumped up in the air and, I, and my scripts go flying. And I think, what am I going to land on? And I land, boom, down on this box thing made of plywood. And it just shreds my fingers. You know, just, and so I roll off of the thing. And then, of course, you know, the director, Peter Puppet, said, Joe, where are you? Get to the set. Get to the you know, set. So I, yeah. I just don't even worry about my scripts. I go flying in. I sit down at my seat. I put on my, my mic. I put my hands down below because they're bleeding. And then everyone's saying to me, Joe, what's wrong? What's wrong? And I can't say anything because we're in the set. You know, we're in the segment. And finally, we go, we go to commercial and they said, Joe, what's happening? I said, I'm bleeding. I said, give me something, you know, some paper towels or something. And so they did. And uh, that was incredible. You know, just to get through something like that was amazing. But I don't think the viewers ever knew that I was that, you know, badly hurt, you know? Yeah. It's pretty crazy. Back in those days, the weather office was toward the front of the building. It's not next to the studio like it is now. Oh. So when we had severe weather or, or you know, breaking weather news, I'd have to run out of the weather office, down the hall, around the corner, into the studio, and I'd always be out of breath by the time I got in there because, you know, it was it was such a long run when we had severe weather. Now, fortunately, it's it's next to the studio, so I don't have to make the long run. I used to have to do the same thing because when I first started on the morning show, I was still doing news cut-ins for mm -hmm. at least for Z104 because I had been with Z104 and Johnny Danger and Greg Bear, and then over at WTSO, which was clearly the harder news side of things. But somehow we had arranged that I don't know for like six months or something, I was still going to do the news cut-ins for Z104. So I'd be doing the same thing, I, you know, running the obstacle course to try to get into the booth and be done in time, you know, during the commercial break to make it back to the TV set. It was crazy. Well, back in those days, I had 13 live feeds during the morning between our news segments with WTDY and Magic 98. And so there's a lot of running back and forth between the, the studio because, you know, now you can record everything. Uh, you couldn't back then. There was no internet, you know, when we started the morning show. I mean, you know, things that we take for granted now, we didn't have back then. You know, I, Patty, just remember, I remember is that, remember Rob too, at one point there, we were all pregnant. We were like four was, months apart. <laughs> And you kept Rob with like, I'll have the water and tear. Like, what do you, what do you say? Like, I get the, rip the sheets and whatever. The sheets water. and the water. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We were talking, you'd be like, are you okay? Are you okay? Because it was you, Hattie, myself, Karn, and then Angela Bettis, who would sometimes be on the morning show with us. And we were all four months, our due dates, four months apart. And it was yeah. just like, okay. You know, like, Rob, thank you for dealing with us. Because I'm sure we were kind of a little, <laughs> I'm sure especially early in the morning like that. that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure that was a little tough. How did you guys all worked the morning show for many, many years? How did you stay sane working these crazy hours or did you? <laughs> no. Well, by Thursday, by Thursday, you could eat glass. Yeah, yeah. And I, yeah. think, I think you, Hattie, were the one that came up with uh, when we got to Thursday, that was Friday Eve. Yes. yes. Yeah, I, I think how do you did? Although, did, mm -hmm. did Chris call you Priscilla? You'll always be Priscilla. <laughs> yeah, a couple of times. He also called me Hottie McLean once on, on oh, yeah. air on stage. That's great. Now the weather with Hottie. Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. No, what, and you're right. Up, uh, what is it about Thursday? Like, it was always like Thursday was the wall, you know? Yeah. And just after that, it's like, you're just crawling on Friday. You're like, oh, please, let's just get through this. Make it easy. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I count time with the number of wake ups. So, you know, when I get to Thursday, I have one more wake up and yeah. then my week is complete. I don't know how, mm -hmm. I mean, Rob, you did this show for 20 years, right? Getting up early. Yeah, well, I think what, what, what made it a little easier, Joy, my wife, was on the same schedule at Wisconsin Public Radio. So we were both getting up 
very early. In fact, Joy would get up and, and um, she'd do a lot of prep work because she would do actually real news stuff, uh, mm -hmm. interviewing people and had to go through a lot of, you know, reading material and all that. So we were on the same schedule. And um, when I would come home and if I needed to go to bed at four o'clock in the afternoon, she would understand, you know, we both understand this what this does to your to your body, but I I I think the three things that I always try to keep in mind was uh, getting enough sleep, eating well, and um, and getting some exercise, and just trying to stay sane uh, that way. But um, I well, think Rob, you used to come to work with a whole cooler. Oh full yeah, of food I my, yeah. The chef. <laughs> I'd be having ham sandwiches at seven thirty in the morning. You know, it's time for lunch. Yeah, oh, that's the middle of the day. So. Can, I, can I add something too? How many of you have had someone at the station as you're walking out at 1230, you know, or after the noon show, or a friend or someone who sees that you're sort of off in the afternoon and say, Oh, mm. must be nice. Yeah. <laughs> yes. oh, nice, you know, to sort of be done now. And what I always wanted to do was when I got to work at 3 a.m., I wanted to pick up the phone and call them and yeah. wake them up. And when the answer they would say, you would say, Oh, it must be nice. It must be nice to just wake them up in the morning. <laughs> just you can feel for a moment what this was like. But yeah, that was really tough. That was hard for me to get up. Well, my, wife, my wife is a teacher and or was a teacher. She just retired. And so we were on opposite schedules. And she always looked forward to snow days. And I always had to explain to her when I was on the morning show, we look at snow days a little bit differently. When you get the day off and you can make cookies at home, you know, I've got to work twice as hard. And I don't have the excuse of not being there. So if it's going to snow in the middle of the night, you know, I better either stay overnight, which I did several times, or, you know, get up super early so I could clear out the driveway so I could get to work because not coming in wasn't an option for us. We'd often oh. apologize to our neighbors, Joy and I, for scraping our car windows <laughs> at 1.30 in the morning and shoveling the driveway and making a lot of a lot of racket. Because, yeah, like you're, you have to get, you have to get to work. And most times, I would be going to work before the snow plows had even mm -hmm. gotten on the streets. So I always liked that you could pick your lane though, you yeah, know, <laughs> even on the county too. highways, like if the oncoming lane looked like it was in better shape than yeah. yours, go ahead and take that one. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody I, else is out there. Oh, and you. stop signs were optional too. Yeah. Yeah. So like, in oh, in sure. a big snowstorm, I would just, just bomb through all the, the red lights and things like that because there was no one on the road. I mean, there weren't mm -hmm. even snowplows out there. And I'm trying to get to work in a Toyota Corolla, which is like <laughs> having a snowmobile. You just kind of rode, rode on top, you know? It's really, it's really amazing. Oh. I think I got stopped like once or twice. And I think specifically because I was driving at 3.30 in the morning. And who are those <laughs> folks usually? <laughs> mm -hmm. So they would be very surprised when they pulled me over and there I am, you know, dressed to be on TV. So I had a suit on. I had, you know, once they realized I was not leaving the bar, they let me proceed. Yeah, yeah we just assume that uh, everyone may have been coming home from the bar when we're on the way to work, right? I right. remember one morning, I on the way to work, and I live very close to work, so just a couple of miles, I passed like 10 cars on the way to work, and I got in and I was like, guys, something is happening like what is going on why are these people mm -hmm. on the road they're like oh hattie it was like a midnight screening of star wars or something like that oh, yeah. i just let out <laughs> i used to the opposite way i used to play a game with myself to see whether i could get into work and i had more like a 10 mile drive into work without seeing any other cars and it mm -hmm. did happen on a number of occasions that i would not see a single other vehicle I would get really disappointed if I was only like a block or two from the station and then someone would turn around the mm -hmm. corner, blow my perfect score. <laughs> well, me... I, was, I was going into work one morning. Um, this might have been like in 2014, my last year. It was in the summer and I was making the turn on the Raymond Road from Gammon and there's a, a service station on the corner. And a guy only dressed in his underwear <laughs> came running, screaming, ah, you know, <laughs> and toward my car in the street. And uh, I remember I, as soon as I got in, I, I called uh, Madison PD and said, there's some, some crazy dude down at the court trip, you know. And uh, so that was one of the more bizarre drive-ins to work that I had. Uh, 
remember coming in one morning and, you know, because back in those days, there was no internet. So all of our weather maps came in on a printer. So my first job is I had to go through all the weather maps. So I got in earlier than everybody else. And I was coming down Raymond Road and it was blocked off. And I thought, I better just check this out. And here, a cab driver had been shot to death right down the street from the TV station and had to come in, call the news director, call uh, call the producer, call in a reporter. I think Joel Despain was, was still reporting for us. And he went and reported on that, you know, at 3.30 in the morning. So, you know, sometimes you're, you're part of the news as well. Yeah. Now, can, can anyone here admit, did anyone ever not sleep before coming back for the next day? <laughs> for whatever reason, yeah. you know, just said all of a sudden you realize I got to go into work, or maybe you slept for an hour. It has to be some of you that had this happen. Back Not in, for it, this show, but like early <clears throat> radio days, absolutely. Yeah, we, were, we were younger and had more energy to do that. <laughs> yeah. well, back, you know, did you know? back in 1993, you know? we, uh, we, we started weekend morning news shows for a couple of uh, years. And the weekend that we were starting it, both Janet Pyatt and Jeff Smith, the other two meteorologists, were out of town. And I had to cover all the newscasts from Thursday through the weekend. Jeff was supposed to get back on Sunday. His father was getting remarried in, uh, in Washington, D.C. And that was the blizzard of the century, the storm of the century that went up the East Coast. And Jeff couldn't get back. He was stuck. I did all the newscasts from Thursday through Monday noon show. There wasn't a time period over that four or five day period where I had less, where I had more than three hours of sleep. Most of the time, I just stayed at the station and just kind of slept in between newscasts. When I got home after the noon show on Monday, I went to bed at about two in the afternoon and slept till early in the morning the next morning. Yeah, when I would you, do that you a lot. Yeah, you or like we'd get home at like ten o'clock in the morning and then just go to sleep and not wake up until you had to wake up for work the right. next morning. Hattie, I'm sorry, I got to break up the party. I have to go. Yeah, no, I was gonna say, I don't know if we're on the 40 minute time limit anyway, so we might be coming yeah. close to that. But um, thank you guys so much for doing hey, this. Let me just yeah. say one thing, okay, about the morning show today. Uh, since we're all here together and we're celebrating this anniversary, it feels like, and I hope you guys agree with me, it feels like the seven of us started this, we launched this family business together. Mm -hmm. And it was very successful. And now, like all families, we've handed it down <laughs> to the next generation. Like our kids are now taking it over. And mm -hmm. you guys are taking it to new and unbelievable heights. And I watch every day. Rob, I'm sure you watch a lot too. Cheryl and, and Charlotte, I know you do too. And I just feel proud every time I tune it in and, and watch you guys in the morning. I don't know. It's like oh, we're always going to be bonded in that way. We're always going to mm -hmm. be family no matter where we are. Saying that we're trying our best. Um, hearing all these stories makes me wish that I was back at the station too because we just right now we're all separated and we can't have that fun that we have before the show, but we'll get back to there someday too. I know. Mm -hmm. So, well, thanks you guys so much for taking the time out of your busy days. I know everyone is busy. <laughs> Not busy. Well, maybe not Rob. <laughs> Rob, is Rob, not, Rob, 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 you didn't have, hike to go have the Elvis glasses? Please tell me you have the Elvis glasses in your lap. Yes. Rob was an Elvis fan, by the way. No doubt you do a very good impression. One for the money, <laughs> here for the show. One of the, the few things that I've kept from my broadcast career, <laughs> Elvis glasses and the sideburns. <laughs> <laughs> Where are they? <laughs> We They're downstairs. No, I won't let them come upstairs. They're in the basement. <laughs> I remember one. Of, didn't your dog eat one of the sideburns? Yes, our dog lady <laughs> went on the sideburns. Oh. Well, maybe Ray can wear the glasses. <laughs> maybe Ray would like to do that. <laughs> All, All right. right, love you guys. It's so good to Thank see you. Bye. Nice yeah. to see everybody. It was great Thank to see everybody. everybody. Thank you. See you later. <laughs> Yay, morning show. <laughs> Thanks for all coming. Some sleep.